Good morning. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about how I have my own issues too. So the reason for this is because there always seems to be this assumption that because I'm young, I don't have the same problems or they're not as serious or they're superficial or they're just not as important as problems of other people when they get older or because they have kids or because this or because that. Here's the thing. We all have problems. That's just part of life. You're going to have issues, whether your issue is because you're a kid and you don't get enough free time to do whatever you want. That's your own problem. It doesn't feel as serious. But once you become an adult at 18, your problems become a little bit more real. They become a little bit more substantial. This is not to say that if you're younger than that, you're going through your own issues, whether you're developing eating disorders, you have mental illnesses, you're just struggling socially. Those are real issues too. But majority of the time, it, I've seen that it happens after 18. This is not going to say that if you're under 18 and you're going through it, it's not to invalidate you. That's not the point. The point is actually to validate you. So I've noticed a little bit in this like day and age, whatever you want to call it, people like to tell us younger people that our issues aren't a big deal. I'm here to tell you that that's not true and you need to stop doing that. It invalidates our feelings for what we're going through and it just makes it harder to go through it because the things that I go through are hard for me. They're really difficult and I struggle with them to get through them to continue to maintain a positive attitude and to actually feel like I can be okay again. And you telling me that my problems aren't a big deal only makes it harder for me to get over it because then not only do I have to deal with my issue, I have to wonder if maybe I am just overthinking it. Maybe I'm just feeling like, you know, I'm, it's not that important or it's not that hard or maybe it shouldn't be this hard. And I start to doubt my own feelings on the issue because, well, maybe they know better because they're older. And that's not always true because we all go through different things. Like, my parents and I have very different life experiences because we hit milestones differently. At my age, my mom had two kids. I have to think about it. And, let's see, two kids. And she's getting ready to have her third, if I did my math right. <laughs> so, she had different issues than I had. She had to worry about having kids, being... Uh, making sure her marriage was good, making sure the house was good, bills and all of that stuff, whereas I have to focus more on my marriage, my cats, my career, and things like that, speaking of which. Um, so we have different issues. That doesn't make her issues worse than mine or more important than mine. And it doesn't, I have to just get away. My cats are acting up. You're not supposed to get behind the curtain, so. Still training. <laughs> so that's an example. I have to teach my cats what's okay and what's not okay in the house. And my mom had to teach kids. Those are two completely different things to do, and there are different ways to do both of them. Like, I'm pretty sure she couldn't spray us with a spray bottle to get us to behave correctly. We probably would have giggled and enjoyed it. <laughs> so we were going through different issues at the same age. That doesn't make either one of our issues more important than the other one. And another thing with this, particularly it's a personal issue for me, is people like to assume that I'm better off than they are because my health should be better or my life should be better or my life should be easier. And it's really not. So something that I don't tell too many people is two years ago when I moved to San Antonio originally, I started a new job. It was very stressful. It was a new environment. I got moved over here. I was excited though. I was very excited to get started on this and I was driving to Austin every day for a week from San Antonio and I wanted to make this work. However, so I moved in on a Saturday. My parents left on a Monday and I'm going to just adjust the smear to make sure this cat's not getting into stuff she's not supposed to. Um, so, let's see, moved in on Saturday with my parents, they left Monday, and Tuesday when I got home from going to 
was it Tuesday? Yeah. So Tuesday I went to Austin to do part of my training and when I was coming back I noticed a spot in my vision. So if you know anything about eye vision, that's actually a really, really scary thing because it can be a couple different things. It could be a floater, it could be uh, just a shadow, uh, it could be like, I think I've seen little rainbow dots, which is from what it was explained to me is when it like pulls a little bit on the skin in your eyelids. I might be explaining it wrong, but it essentially does a little colorful rainbow. It's not really anything to worry about. Then it could be things like retinal tears and retinal detachments and uh, myopic macular degeneration and... Uh, macular age-related macular degeneration and there's a lot of different things that it could be and this is coming a few years after my dad had two retinal tears and a detachment so he went through that and he described it as a shadow in his vision that kind of came down like a curtain when he had the tears and I think the detachment as well so knowing this um, part of what they had told us was it had a little bit to do with the fact that he had an astigmatism and he has all other eye related issues that I'll talk about a little later but that is one of the things that can cause them because your eye is shaped like a football and so it stretches the skin a little bit more in the end so it like stretches it out the same way if you're like rolling dough and it stretches out too thin it can tear um, or it can peel off the back of your eye and that causes the tears and detachments. So back to my story, I was driving home and I noticed a little shadow. Now it didn't feel very big but I noticed like a little black in my vision and I couldn't really see through it so it didn't feel like you have a natural blind spot. It didn't feel like that. It felt like a shadow in my vision. And I'd had it before and I'd gone to the doctor and they said it was nothing to worry about just to keep an eye on things because especially with my dad's history, I might inherit those kinds of issues. So I said, okay, um, was a little worried, got home, I called my mom and I told her what was happening and I said that there's a shadow in my vision and it hasn't gone away yet. So the last time it happened, it happened very briefly, uh, just driving around, but by the time I went to the doctor the next day it had gone away. So it wasn't a big deal, but this one hadn't gone away yet. And I called her the next day, actually. I called her on a Wednesday. And she said, you need to go to the eye doctor. You, you need to go. Now, there's a couple of different places you can go. There's an ophthalmologist and an optometrist. An optometrist is where you're going to go if you need, like, a prescription change or you just need to have your vision checked. An ophthalmologist is a little bit, you can do some of the same things, but it's a little bit more in-depth education so they can do a little bit more, like, into your eye health. So, I looked was partially looking around for an ophthalmologist ended up having my mom help me out when she got there because she was driving up and I went to work that day half day and I came back and met my mom at my apartment and we went to an ophthalmologist's office and she was looking at my eye and she was taking pictures and she says I think I know I have an idea of what this could be but I'm also not sure and it doesn't seem very likely but we're gonna do a test to see where your blind spot is to see if it's something that's actually in your eye or if it's just a perception thing. Like maybe you think there's a shadow, but really you, you see through it just fine. So I did what's uh, called something like a peripheral test. So they kind of put one eye into this machine. So you look around and you get a clicker and it just starts flashing little lights. And every time you see a flash, you're supposed to click it. So it feels a little bit like a video game. So every time you see a flash, click, 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 and so every time you see it, you're supposed to click it and you're supposed to stay staring in the middle because it tests your peripheral vision. Um, and they did it on both eyes. And then, so that happens and I get out of that and she says, okay, you do definitely seem to have a really big blind spot in your left eye. And I think I know what it is, but I also am not really sure and it's not my area of specialty you need to go to the retinal consultants of San Antonio. They have more experience with these kinds of issues. And that was really scary for me because that's kind of where my dad went. Not specifically them, but he went to a retinal specialist when he had his tears and detachments because that they were the ones that were able to help fix the problem. So to me, that meant that this was probably a bigger issue than I was admitting to. So I went, we went home that day, we slept, 
tried to get over it, wasn't going to go in the work the next day, and had my appointment scheduled for early in the morning, the retinal consultants. So I went in, and I felt absolutely terrified because that day I walked into an office, and so when you go to a doctor's office, there's all kinds of people. There's older people, there's younger people, there's kids, there's teenagers, there's adults. I walked into the retinal consultant's waiting room, and there were nothing but older people. I'm talking white hair, like wrinkly skin, like your vision goes as you get older kind of thing. And I was terrified. I didn't see anybody younger than me. I didn't see anybody as young as my mom. Like, I felt like when we went in there, everybody kept thinking, oh, they're really young to be here. But it's, pr and they probably thought it was my mom. <laughs> so I just remember saying, thinking, I, I shouldn't be here. I'm at the time I was 23 yeah <laughs> at the time I was 23 and I was terrified I really felt like I really shouldn't be handling these issues at 23 I should be dealing with hangovers and bad decisions in relationships which I had dealt with in my time but this isn't one of those issues this should have been something that I didn't have to worry about for years so I finally, you know, we sat down, they took my picture, they add it to your, like, patient profile. I'm sitting there with my mom, and then we go in, they take a bunch of pictures of my eye. So they give you some dilating eye drops, makes your pupil really big. They go in, they take a bunch of pictures of both eyes. Um, and the doctor kind of says, mm, okay, I think I know what this is, but I really want to be sure because of your age because at my age it shouldn't be happening because I shouldn't be dealing with these kinds of issues so we ended up going to another test where they um, injected a dye into my veins so that it would go through my system and then they were going to take pictures as it went through my eye because they thought that's what it was so they took pictures, they got what they needed. Um, I went back to the office and he says, the test confirmed what I thought. It looks like you have myopic macular degeneration. So if you don't know what that is, myopic is referring to the shape of my eye, which is where this problem stems from. So there's age-related and there's myopic. Uh, age-related is as you get older, this issue comes up. Myopic is it has to do with the shape of your eye and it can happen a lot younger. And when they say a lot younger, they mean like 50s and 60s, or even 30s and 40s. They really, really do not mean in your 20s. <laughs> and they very much emphasize this to me, not that it really made a difference for me. <clears throat> so, it, in the back of my eye, a vein had grown, and it had lifted up the back of my eye skin a little bit, like it was making a little bubble because the vein had grown and it made a little bubble and that was what I was having trouble seeing through because it was leaking fluid. So it was similar, I guess, to a bruise. And so he said, there's a couple of treatment options. We can do an injection that is gonna make the vein stop growing and possibly reduce it in size, which will make the spots smaller. Or we can do a laser that'll burn it so it'll stop leaking and but you won't get any of that vision back so we're gonna try the first one um, I'm gonna go get ready and I stopped I was like wait what this is this isn't separate appointments either this is all in the same day that I'd come in this was like two days between going to the uh, ophthalmologist uh, opt ophthalmologist office I always get it mixed up going to the ophthalmologist's office and then going to a retinal specialist, getting all these tests done and being told, no, we need to do this right now because if we don't, it's only going to get worse. So I'm freaking out and I'm like, okay, well, that's, well, it's not really like I have a, an option. And then, so they went off, they did what they needed to, they put some numbing gel on your eye, they put some uh, other different eye drops to kind of clean it, make it as clean as possible. They take my contacts off by this point. And I'm sitting in this office with my mom and I'm just trying to breathe because this 
just it didn't feel real yet it felt like this I was gonna wake up any minute and it was just gonna be a nightmare or it wasn't I was they were gonna come back and say just kidding it's something really simple and easy and it'll go away on its own time uh, what made it a little worse was when he's telling me what it looks like he said that it looks like there's scarring on your eye that indicates that this has happened before like this has been happening and all I can remember thinking is when he's showing me these pictures, I was like, I've seen these before, but they said it was um, lattice degeneration, which is essentially stretch marks on your eye. And he said, well, that is what would be the more obvious answer, because for your age, that's what should be happening. Like, that's from a stretched out eye, you're going to get stretch marks on it, and that's more common. But I see this all the time in my patients. This is scarring from what's been happening. <sighs> Remember that first spot I said that I got in my eye that went away before I went to the doctor? I was 19. So he was telling me that this had been happening since I was 19. And I'm 23. trying to wrap my brain around this and just trying to figure out what is going on. <laughs> so he comes back in. I can't really see anything because I'm not wearing my glasses and if you don't know, I have terrible vision. <laughs> so comes in, my mom's just kind of like sitting with me, trying to talk to me. It, it's a little funny in hindsight because she's trying to show me pictures of like, this is what your doctors look like and this is what this is, and she's trying to show me things and she's researching what the doctor's telling us. Like, okay, what is myopic macular degeneration? What does this look like? What is this treatment? What is, she's just like on her phone, like a wizard, just like Googling everything, trying to get as much information as she can. And she's just showing me pictures of like, this is who your doctor is and this, and I can't see anything. Guys, by this point, I'm just like, uh-huh, uh, it's just a square on your phone, mom. Like, I don't, I can't see anything. And it was... I appreciate her doing that because it helped distract me from what was happening. <laughs> and in hindsight, it was just really funny and I got to talk about it with my dad later because out of all my family, my mom doesn't wear glasses. Uh, she doesn't wear contacts, she's just had good vision. Uh, <laughs> and me and the rest of my family have always needed glasses, so we're all just kind of giggling that the one person is just showing us pic me pictures and I'm just like, cool, thanks mom. <laughs> but the doctor comes in, she's like holding my hand, she's like, we're gonna get through this. He puts in a little thing that I asked about later and I shouldn't have because it freaked me out. But it essentially goes under my eye, under my lids, and holds it open. And it, so it's like a little machine. I guess I could compare it to like the little lip pulled back, so like the thing that you put in your mouth when they're doing dental work, but for your eye. <laughs> so they have it open and he says, okay, I need you to look straight ahead or look, I don't remember he pointed or he just told me where to look, but he said, but I need you try very hard not to move your eye. That's a really difficult request, but I said, okay, well, I'll do my best. So I look off, I feel a little pressure pinch and then gone. So he put the needle in to my eye, uh, injected it and pulled it out. I've got to say, he knows what he's doing. Took out the little thing and everything, rinsed it out really well put more of the, like, the cleaning stuff, and then I close my eye, and he says, okay, you're done, you're gonna go to the front desk, we're gonna take care of, like, insurance and payment and all of that stuff that we have to do whenever you leave a doctor's office, and you're gonna come back in, I don't remember if it was a week or two weeks, but that is right around when, you know, we'll be able to tell if the medication's working, if it's doing well, and if it's working and it hasn't quite gone away, we'll do another injection because he said usually it takes a, like a few injections for it to work. So I get out, I sit in the waiting room, my mom's taking care of everything, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Just, I broke down in that instance. I was done, everything was taken care of, and it just overwhelming fear and I think it was mostly just fear and worry sinking in and the realization that this was happening, this is real, this is, this isn't just a bad dream. 
and I'm just sitting there and I'm bawling in this middle of this waiting room with a bunch of old people probably thinking either poor girl or wonder what she's crying about or whatever and I just sat there and it all sank in and two years later I'm doing great the first injection actually really worked well they ended up doing a second injection anyway and it made the dot the spot go get extremely small so now it's not anywhere near as prevalent as it used to be and my vision's gotten a little wonky thrown out trying to learn how to refocus and how to go through everything but I'm fine now I don't have to go through injections anymore there was two and it was done and the second one was a precautionary which ended up helping a lot um, I'm doing great I've relearned to do a lot of things because when part of your vision in your left eye goes out your depth perception can get a little skewed so that was a learning curve and a learning process but the whole point of this story isn't, I'm not looking for sympathy, I'm not looking for anybody to feel bad for me. The point is, you don't know what's happening. I'm sure most of the people who saw me during that time would never have thought that I was going through such a traumatic experience, much less a disease that doesn't affect people my age. It doesn't happen to me. And since then I've gotten comments of, oh, um, your vision can't possibly be as bad as mine, or it's not that bad, or you don't have as bad of health issues as I do. And I hate having to correct them and say, no, I, I have my own share of issues. And I'll say the words macular degeneration, and they just sit there and go, wait, what? You're kidding. You're pulling our leg. That's not... That's not a you issue. That's not a young person thing. And I, it's not, but it is something that I'm going through and I've had to learn. And since then, they've changed the diagnosis a few times. They think it might have been stress related. My husband is convinced that it was stress related because it hasn't happened since then. He thinks that he was the cause of that because I met him a few months after that. But my point is just because someone isn't the same age as you doesn't mean that their problems are any more or less intense or important or life affecting you never know what's happening i usually don't tell people because i don't want anybody's pity i'm doing fine i made my mistakes of researching it and figuring out what other people do to cope and it really didn't help me because i started to panic and cry but Feeling like I couldn't talk about it because I have my whole life ahead of me was part of what made it really difficult for me to go through because I really wanted to talk to somebody. I wanted to feel like I could show up to like meetings or groups of people that had maybe something similar or talk to the people in the waiting room, but people don't always want to talk to me because I'm so young or I don't know what it's like or maybe by the time. And one, another thing that I heard a lot was maybe by the time you get older they'll have developed a cure or a bionic eye that will replace your eye and you'll have perfect vision again or something and I'm sure that's what they've been saying for years and if it happens well great but that doesn't change what I'm going through now it doesn't change that the struggles I had it didn't change that all of the forums I was reading there was people staring at the pictures of their loved ones trying to memorize faces in case they had completely lost their vision. And here I was, 23, not married, not dating, no kids. And I wanted all of that. And then I also researched, and it's still a worry that I have every now and then, that if it ever comes back, the treatment that I took is called Avastin. And what it does is it stops vein growth. Which means that if this comes up again during another stressful period of my life, like a pregnancy, I can't have that treatment. Because I don't know if you know, but vein growth is very important during a pregnancy. And these are the things that I worry about. And they shouldn't be because I'm young and I've got my whole life ahead of me. But this is my life and this is my reality. And I've learned to deal with it and I've learned to cope and I've talked to my husband about it and we've just figured that when it comes we'll deal with it and we are both people who like to plan way too far ahead and so we'll have our contingency plans and the things that we want to do and he's going to take me to Mexico to do trial treatments or something like that I don't know 
But these are the things that we think about. And you wouldn't know it because you look at us and we're, we're a young couple and there's all of these things that we don't have to worry about. But then there's all of these things that we do, whether or not we should be. So before you start dismissing somebody because of their age or dismissing their problem because to you it's not a big deal, imagine what it might feel like for them. Take a minute to actually think about what it would feel like to go through something like that. Maybe have a little sympathy. Thanks for listening.